أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعاديات ضبحا فالموريات قدحا فالمغيرات صبحا فأثرن به نقعا فوسطن به جمعا إن الإنسان لربه لكنود وإنه على ذلك لشهيد وإنه لحب الخير لشديد أفلا يعلم إذا بعثر ما في القبور وحصل ما في الصدور إن ربهم بهم يومئذ لخبير I want to start by saying that this surah is one of my favorite uh, in, favorites in the Qur'an when it comes to exploring the incredible logic of the Qur'an and the way in which the, the, the beautiful, creative way in which Allah sets up an argument. You know, the, the, the message of the Qur'an is very straightforward, very simple. But the power of the Qur'an is not, in, not just in what it says, but in how it says it. And this is a, a stellar example of how, how Allah presents an argument how he sets up the mind of the listener in, in you know, conveying a message to them in a powerful way. What, what we're going to learn in this surah, inshallah ta'ala, is the attitude of the human being, the greed of the human being, the carelessness and the heedlessness of the human being, and the things he does on this earth without fear of any consequence. The human being does things on this earth without caring what is going to be the result of this. I'm not going to get caught so I don't care. Now, وَالْعَادِيَاتِ ضَبْحَ Allah is taking an oath. And He says, I swear by al-adiyat. The word adiyah in Arabic, it comes from the word adu, which means to have animosity. But adi, the, the masculine form, is used for someone who's running in battle against the enemy. You know, there's in, in battle, there's one thing you're preparing for the enemy, or your enemies. But when you're actually running towards your enemy, and you know when somebody's running towards the enemy, they don't look left or right, they don't care about anything else. All they care about is, I'm gonna kill that guy over there. They're charging towards him. Now that's the form of the word that's been used, وَالْعَادِيَاتِ I swear by battle horses that are marching forward with animosity. That's, the, that's what Allah swears by. So Allah is not swearing by horses that are males. Males, He's actually swearing by mares, female horses. Why? Because they used to be faster in battle. The Arabs used to prefer the female horse over the male horse. So already this is not just any car, this is the exotic car. Right? This is the faster one. And it's headed right into battle. This is an action scene from the very beginning. Then Allah adds the ha dabha. This is Baydavi rahimahullah. He says, I'lam anna dabh aswat an fasil khayl idha adat. You should know the word dabha at the end is describing, you should know it's describing an fasil khayl, the breath the panting of the horse when it's, in, in, when it's in, uh, engaged in aggressive motion. You know when a horse is galloping really fast, you hear that like, that, that sound you hear? The word for that in Arabic is dabh. Dabh. By using that word, we're learning that this horse is going as fast as it can. It's going as fast as it can. And it's marching forward towards what? An enemy. And how do we know there's an enemy ahead? Because of what word? Wal-adiyat. Now we come to the next ayah, فَالْمُورِيَاتِ قَبْحَ The other thing we learn here about the word, these, these muriyat is that as they are running, the word ira from which muriyat comes is a description, it's an adjective for these horses. Ira is to cause sparks to fly when you strike something. So Allah is saying these horses are, are causing fires. These horses are creators of fire as they are galloping. What does that mean? You know the horse is running really fast and it's got a horseshoe on which is metal. And it strikes on the rock as it's running. And what happens every time the rock strikes? Sparks are flying. So they're, they're basically creating a fire as they run. It's like an it's added intensity to the scene. Right? They're, blaze, they're literally blazing a trail behind them. Now, فَالْمُورِيَا Then is the word qadha. Qadha in Arabic is a violent strike that is very loud. The word qadha implies they're very loud gallops. Every strike is very, very loud and violent. So now this rider who is captured in the image of this surah, the horse was already running fast. It was already panting. And now as he's riding it, he looks down, what does he see? He sees these sparks flying. It's a, it's, the scene got even more intense. Just try to picture this scene of these horses. Just a small, adiyat by the way, jam'u qilla. So it's a small bunch of horses, less than 10. 
So it's a small group, small group of bandits if you will, very few, and they're marching forward and these sparks are flying. Then he says, فَالْمُغِيرَاتِ subha." Then the next scene, مُغِيرَات يُغِيرُ أَهْلَهَا عَلَى الْعَدُوْ ضَبْحَا أَيْ فِي وَقْتِهِ Let's take the meaning one at a time, we'll go to Al-Baydawi rahmahullah. They take their riders right, right on top of the enemy. Ighara in Arabic means to ambush. That's from the word mughirat. It means to ambush. So we're learning these horses now. First they were marching and galloping forward, but in the next ayah, they've already reached the enemy and it's time to ambush the enemy. So they're, they're at the point of contact. Ighara, to ambush or to attack the enemy or to be right on top of him. And by using that for the horses, what we're learning is, the horses delivered the rider who's the actual ahl of the horse, the, the actual rider, the owner of the horse, they took him right on top of the enemy. So the enemy was, is like on the ground, and this guy's with his spear above him, literally hovering over him. And that's the, the, the image captured by the word al-mughirat. Now, فَالْمُغِيرَاتِ subha. They ambushed the enemy at what time? Subh. The word ikhara is used when you go against the enemy, when this band goes against the enemy with the intent to kill. أَوْ أَسَرْ أَوْ نَهَبْ or to attack them secretly, or to rob them and pillage them. Allah attributed ighara as a noun to them. When a noun is used in Arabic, it means whatever you're talking about is known for that quality. So what we're saying then is the horses are known for running really fast. They are known that whenever they run, sparks fly. And they are known, these horses are known for, for being bandits and attacking the enemy. And they are also famous for doing that at what time? In the morning. Subhan. But if you know anything about attacking and robbing and pillaging, then you know the best time to do that is not the morning. The best time to do that is at night. When the enemy doesn't know where you came from, where you left. You can use the cloak of darkness to your advantage. But these guys over here that are being talked about, they don't care. They're attacking at what time? In the morning. Now we get into the heart of the matter where the action begins. فَأَثَرْنَا then they cause, these horses they cause, that's the feminine plural, atharna, noon and niswa, it's used for the horses, because adiyat is plural. So they cause, they cause something to rise. Athara in Arabic is to cause something to rise. What is it that they cause to rise? Naqa. Naqa in Arabic is one of three words in the Quran used for dust. Naqa is used in Arabic when something is moving really fast, like a car or a caravan or even a horse. You know when something moves really fast in the dust, what rises behind it? A cloud of dust, it leads a trail of dust. So even if it's gone, you could see some, some horse went by here because I still see the cloud of dust, right? That cloud of dust is called naqar. It's not just any dust, it's specifically the dust that rises up in the air when something moves by the, in really fast motion. فَأَثَرْنَا bihi naqar. We talked a little bit about فَأَثَرْنَا, we talked about naqar. They cause, they cause to rise, that's أَثَرْنَا. Naqar is the cloud of dust that they're causing to rise. But the word we're missing in the middle is? Bihi. So what is that bihi? The pronoun he, it referring to. It could be referring to makan. For example, وَقِيلَ الْمَعْنَ فَأَثَرْنَا بِمَكَانِ عَدُوٍ عَدُوِّهِنَّ نَقْعَى In other words, when they attack, when the action, when the fighting begins, there's so much action on the ground that dust is rising and you can't even see your enemy. So once the battle begins, it's completely covered and engulfed in dust. You can barely see in front of you in the chaos of battle. That's one implication of bihi. Now we get to the final ayah of the oath. فَوَسَطْنَ بِهِ جَمْعَى then they penetrate. Wasat. Wasat in Arabic is to, the, to penetrate right to the middle of something. What this, the word jam'ah could be impli, applied to the horses, these guys that are attacking. Jam'ah could also be used for the enemy. Meaning they went right into the heart of the entire gathering. Now you can imagine, the, the enemy also has line one, line two, line three. You know how soldiers stand in lines? And these guys, it's almost like they formed a spear and they... They, they penetrated right through those lines, crushing their way in. And where are they now? In the middle. And when they're in the middle, where's the enemy? The, you know, before the enemy was in front of them, but now when they're in the middle, where's the enemy? All around them. The enemy's all around them. فَوَسَطْنَ بِهِ جَمْعًا Now, when I stop here, but just, I mean, I wanted to give you some, some uh, background about the, the word ba a little bit فَوَسَطْنَ bihi. b could be transit, transitivity we said taking advantage of the dust but also ba here could mean الحالية which means immediately as the dust cloud rises immediately there's no hesitation they go right into the heart of the battle okay now it's a climactic moment you want to know what happened next that's what you want to know really badly now at that point Allah says what He wanted to say all along 